Discovery can get messy. Honey is a wonderful thing. Sweet and sticky, and it's delicious in tea and on baked goods. Have you ever wondered where it comes from? Bees, of course! Honeybees belong to order Hymenoptera, which means membranous wings. It might be weird to think about something as delicious as honey being made by insects, but it's not just as easy as going to the store and buying a bottle. I visited Marge at the Lyman Woods Nature Center to learn more about how bees make honey. Before honey can be made, the bees need to collect pollen and nectar. Nectar is a sweet liquid that the bees drink from flowers using a straw-like mouthpart called a proboscis. Plants produce nectar because they really want the honeybees to stop by. It's a trade. The bee gets a tasty treat, but what does the plant get? While the bee is drinking, bundles of hairs on its legs called pollen baskets get filled with pollen, which is the yellow dust in the center of a flower. Pollen is how plants reproduce, so when the bee visits another plant of the same species, it will transfer the pollen, allowing the plants to make seeds. Once the bee is full of nectar and pollen, she'll return to the hive. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you! Honeybees are social insects, like ants, which means that they live in large groups called hives. A hive is ruled by a single queen bee. All of the work in the hive is done by her daughters, the worker bees. The only male bees in the hive are the drones, whose job it is to mate with the queen. Here you can see a drone in amongst the workers. You can tell him apart by his stockier body and his big eyes. In order to open up the hive for us to have a look inside, Marge needed to smoke the bees. The smoke calms them down so they're less likely to sting. Since the day was hot, the bees were bearding on the outside of the hive to stay cool. So, when they bring the nectar in, they add some good enzymes and things and then they fan it. And when they fan it, they bring the water level down to a certain level, because there's a lot of water and nectar. When they bring it down to this certain level, then it it turns to honey. And when it's honey, they know it and they will cover it with wax. And that's when I see all this capped wax, or capped honey I should say, then I know that it is harvestable. So it's honey when it's covered with wax. The bees store honey and pollen in the capsules of the honeycomb, which they make out of wax from their bellies. The adult bees eat mostly nectar and honey. So you say these the capped cells are full of honey, so mm -hmm. how do you get the honey out? Okay, so in order to harvest the honey, first you have to get the bees off of here. <laughs> There's many ways. There's some, some ways you can drive down the bees or blow them off mm -hmm. or brush them off. But um, you get rid of the bees and you bring these back um, inside. And then what I do is take a, I use a hot knife or you can use a regular knife, but I cut off the wax cappings. And which opens up all the cells and then I set these into an extractor, um, a big round centrifuge and then it spins out. It will spin out and come out um, into a bucket and then I just, I actually just put it through one strainer just in case any wax bits came out and then it goes into the bottle. So simple as that. The queen lays her eggs inside other cells in the honeycomb. Worker bees feed all the babies royal jelly which they make in their heads. After the first few days, any baby bees that are destined to become workers will get switched to a diet of pollen and honey mixed together into something called bee bread. Any baby bees destined to become new queens will continue to eat royal jelly. When the baby bees are ready to pupate, their cells get capped, just like the honey nearby. We say that honey bees are social insects because they work together to raise new babies and to protect their hive. If you've ever bothered a bee before, then you know that they can use their stinger to hurt any animals that they perceive as threats to their hive. But remember, honeybees only sting as a form of defense. If you don't bother the bees or their hive, then you don't have to worry about getting stung. But you might be thinking about some other insects that sting. Wasps, hornets, and other bees also belong to order Hymenoptera. Females of all these insect groups can sting because the stinger is a modified ovipositor, which insects normally use for laying eggs. Another reason scientists say honeybees are social is because they work together to find food. Did you know that honeybees dance? When a worker bee returns to the hive, she dances to tell the other workers where the best nearby source of food is. The direction she faces for her dance tells the other bees which direction to fly. Then she waggles her abdomen. The number of waggles tells the other bees how far to fly. She'll repeat her dance over and over until everybody gets the message. Groovy! 
Although Marge's honeybees live in these cozy hive boxes, wild hymenopterans often build their own hives out of mud or a paper they make from chewing up wood pulp. But we started all this talking about honey, and bees certainly aren't the only ones who enjoy the sweet, sticky stuff. Humans have been collecting honey from bees for thousands of years. And while most people enjoy eating honey, did you know that it can also be used to treat cuts and burns? Honey is useful in medical applications because of its antibacterial and antifungal properties. I mean, not only honey is antibacterial you know, and anti and anti-everything and it stays good for a long time, forever. Um, there's other things like this propolis in the hive. It's this gooey, you see this here, it's actually like taffy, it's really sticky. And it's, see, it's just like, and when it's warm it's sticky, when it's cold it's brittle. But all this you see, that's why we need this hive tool to pry apart these boxes because this propolis is made from the resins of the plants and the trees and this is got a lot of anti-everything <laughs> and it it's really um, protects them. Special thanks to Marge Trockey for taking me out in the bee yard and sharing so much great information with me. More thanks to the folks at Lyman Woods Nature Center in Downers Grove, Illinois for having the bee yard and allowing me to visit. You can find out more about everything that's going on at Lyman Woods at their website linked in the description. So the next time you see a bee, I hope you'll be thinking about honey instead of worrying about getting stung. And watching bees move from flower to flower is a great reason to go outside and get messy. Don't forget to post your entomology questions in the comments section below or on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and sharing, and I will see you next week.